Welcome to Geometry once again. Uh, we're going to continue taking a look at circles and spheres with some more definitions regarding uh, circles and disks. Uh, so let's take a look at that. A central angle of a circle is any angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. Okay. Given any angle, we say that a point is intercepted. Again, given any angle, we say that a point is intercepted by that angle if the point lies on a side or in the interior of that angle. Now, when we talk about the interior of an angle, we're referring to anything between those two sides. Excellent. Uh, excellent. So the arc of a circle. So if we have a circle centered at P and uh, having a, a central angle of APC, the points of the circle intercepted by the angle is an arc of the circle. So if we take a circle with center P, and let's take a point on the circle. Let's say there and some other point on the circle, say there. So we have A and C. We can create central angle APC. Now for this angle, the points of the circle that are intercepted by the angle is the is an arc. So let's try to draw the arc. The arc is this right here, but specifically it's the points on the circle, right? So it's not just outside of, it's on. So I moved that slightly so beyond top. So this is the intercepted arc. Excellent. The measure of an arc is defined to be the measure of the corresponding central angle. So the, this arc, its measure is defined by the measure of the angle. Okay. Given a disc centered at P, so same image here, but we're including all of the points. Given a disc centered at P and a central angle APC, the points of the disk intercepted by the angle is a sector of the circle. So, or is the sector of a disk. So let's use green here. Right, this including those points there at, uh, uh, on the circle. So the disk and the circle, uh, those would be our sector. So central angles and arcs, okay, central angles, so uh, central angles and their intercept arcs can be divided into two categories. Uh, major angles and major arcs are those with a measure of more than 180 degrees. So this uh, matches with uh, what we've heard before regarding angles. Okay, so uh, more than 180 degrees for major angles and arcs, less than 180 degrees for minor angles and arcs, and then of course a straight line and uh, semicircles are associated with an angle measure of exactly 180 degrees. Okay, so straight angles and semicircles, half a circle. So when we're referring to, uh, for example, uh, central angle APC, we never actually specified whether we were referring to this 
portion or this portion. So this would be, we could say, uh, the minor angle. And we know that we're talking about this side. If we said the major, then we know we're talking about this side. Okay. Excellent. So we can find arc lengths and sector areas by taking the appropriate uh, fraction of the circumference and area of the circle. So we have uh, a pause really quickly. It looks like I didn't write that down. So let me grab that and make sure that I've got the correct thing to share. Of course, I did actually have it written down. Uh, I expected to write something here, but it's the next property. Excellent. So arc lengths and sector areas. If theta is the measure of the central angle corresponding to an arc and sector of a circle, so theta would be this measure for what we drew above, uh, then the arc length S and the sector area A are given by, uh, so let's start by redrawing the same sort of image uh, here. So if we have center and uh, sector radius uh, angle measure, S is this length. And we want to give uh, two different ways to measure this. If you're measuring the angle in degrees, we have to account for that. Uh, so S would be given by uh, theta over 360 degrees, right? Because we're working in degrees. That gives us the fraction. That gives us the portion of the circle. And then, of course, we would just multiply that by the circumference of 2 pi r. This is the portion of the circumference. We can simplify that. Uh, 2 and 360 will reduce. So we have theta uh, divided by 180 degrees times pi r. And then the area is pretty much the same situation. Right, theta divided by 360 degrees. This is the portion of the disk that we're looking at and times the area of the entire disk, which would be pi r squared. All right. So if we're measuring in radians, then things become a little bit easier. Uh, well, I suppose they're but yeah, they, they clean up a little bit nicer. So uh, we can say that when we're measuring in radians, the arc length is given by the angle measure in radians divided by 2 pi. That's the portion of the circle that we're looking at. That's all right. It's only this portion out of the whole thing times the arc length or times the uh, circumference, which would be 2 pi r. So the 2 pi and 2 pi cancel to leave us with just theta r. So that cleans up a bit nicer than that. And then the area of our sector would be given by, again, we're looking at theta over 2 pi, this portion of the circle or the disk. And then we multiply by the area, pi r squared. So this reduces just the pi's cancel out in this case. So of course, we still are left with the 1 half uh, r squared times theta. Excellent. So this will help us out. So let's take a look at a few examples. I believe we've got uh, three examples to take a look at. Uh, and in fact, it's just two. So let's say a small garden uh, area has the shape of a sector of a circle with a radius 11 feet and central angle 120 degrees. So we've got a garden, which is a sector 
120 degrees, radius of 11 feet. Uh, this S would be the uh, arc length here. We want to determine the area and the complete perimeter of the garden. So the area and the perimeter. So we want to find the area. We can start with that. Try that color change again. The area. Oh, bother. Try it one more time here. Area is given by, uh, let's see, we're looking at 120 degrees of the 360 degrees times pi times the radius squared. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the formula that we're looking at right here. Area is this. Theta is 120 over 360 pi r squared. And uh, 120 over 360 would reduce to one third. So that gives us 11 squared over three times pi. So we're left with, uh, if we were to evaluate that, 126.7 square feet. Excellent. Uh, so if we wanted to calculate the arc length, we know this side length and this side length are both 11. So 2 times 11, and then we need the arc length as well. So the arc length would be theta over 180, so 120, 120 degrees, divided by uh, 180 degrees. Uh, times pi times r. Excellent. So 120 over uh, 180 does also simplify. Uh, that would be 2 thirds. So 2 times 11 is 22. 22 thirds times pi. And this works out to be 23.0 feet. I'm sure there's a decimal beyond that, uh, but it's pretty close. Excellent. So then the perimeter would be equal to 11 plus 11 plus 23, which is 45 feet. So this gives us our area, and this gives us our perimeter. Excellent. All right, so a slightly more interesting area. So we want to find the area of the region formed by a semicircle. So that's a half a circle with diameter 12 meters and an isosceles triangle whose congruent sides have a measure of 10 meters. The diameter of the semicircle and the base of the triangle are the same segment. So we're saying we have. semicircle and then we have a isosceles triangle and the isosceles triangle and the semicircle share a side so what we have is an ice cream cone ice cream cone or maybe a snow cone delicious so we know this is side length eight, and we know this overall length is 12. And if you were to draw a line here, you, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Noticing that this side length is six. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we could identify this height as 10. So that gives us the ability to calculate the area of this isosceles triangle quite nicely. And then we can use the formulas above to help us evaluate uh, the area of this semicircle as well. So we need to calculate two areas and then we'll add them together. 
So first, let's calculate the area of the, uh, let's see, the semicircle. So the area of the semicircle is equal to, all right, we know that the angle measure is pi. So we have pi over 2 pi times pi r squared, or simplified, it's simply 1 half r squared theta, where theta is pi for us. 1 half r squared theta. 1 half r squared theta. r, of course, is the 6, so this is 1 half times 6 squared times pi, which is 18 pi. Then we can calculate the area of the triangle. Uh, one half base times height, of course. So base is 12, height is 10. One half base times height. So it's one half of 12 times. Uh, oh, bother. I just noticed I made a mistake. I was copying things down wrong. I had those two mixed up, right? We're told that this is 10 over here. So those of you that were following along uh, and, and reading, you would have noticed that mistake a bit earlier. Fortunately, that didn't affect our uh, calculation of the area of the semicircle. Um, so here we would actually find this should be the eight that we said earlier. Excellent. So it's not uh, it's not ten here. It uh, that should be eight. So twelve times eight. So one half of twelve is six. Six times eight is forty eight. So the area overall is equal to eighteen pi plus 48, and we could approximate that as 104.5 square meters as the area of our region. All right, uh, so that's it for now. Uh, we'll pick up with cylinders and cones a little bit later. I hope you are doing well. I'll see you guys again shortly.